to be, then it'll be a love song. Hey, it's Gabby Faye, and you're listening to Gabby Faye Podcast. Welcome to the first episode of my podcast. I'm super excited. I'm here with a special guest who will be introduced in a little while, but I wanted to get into something that everybody has been asking me about and the reasons why I first started this podcast. Um, I recently went viral on the internet for having high dating standards, and that's not like really crazy, right? To have like high dating standards. But a lot of people have made me think or believe that uh, a person from my standpoint, where I'm coming from, my looks, my uh, everything about me, they feel that my standards don't match up. And I never thought I would have to like really explain this, but it's really an interesting topic because um (laughs) <laughs> I've always had these standards and I kind of want to go into it in this episode. Um, so for example, I f- started talking about how I like men who provide for me, how I like men that, you know, they take care of me. They, they pay for my nails, my hair, they pay for dates, they pay for my Uber when they come and get me. Um, and I was recently reposted by a lot of major blogs for example, the shade room reposted me and I got into it with a lot of like my uh, celebrity like crushes and like people who I like look up to and I watch on TV and they had a lot to say. And I was just like, wow, like I didn't even realize that I would be having these conversations because to me in my world, like it's normal. Right. But I guess everybody comes from different walks of life. So here's my standpoint, my viewpoints on dating, my high standards, Um <laughs> and I will get into it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm here today with Shannon, one of my good friends who is an amazing, beautiful, plus size woman who also dates very uh, awesome guys who happen to be uh, making a good amount of money. And, you know, I want to title this episode, I'm Fat and I date high value men. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that like that sounds crazy to some people, but it's true. And this is our take on it. So Shannon, how's your dating life? How, how are you today, girl? Like, how's it going? Today is interesting because uh, it's true. I am a plus size fat woman. I'm comfortable with the word fat for myself. Same. Others might not be, so don't go around calling everyone <laughs> fat. But... Uh, I'm comfortable with that descriptive word for myself because I just think it is more of a neutral word than anything. Just describes who I am. So in regards to my dating life, yes, I am a fat plus size woman who dates. um, I like the term high standard men. However, I also (laughs) I don't think that having money generally makes you high standard, right? Like you want to also have really high standards for your emotional like depth towards dating as well um so i i think the people i've dated have high they are high standard people but they also happen to have money just want to clarify that yeah totally i totally understand (laughs) that because it it isn't all about money it's also about how he treats you a guy could have money and like not want to spend a dime on you and be super stingy which that is literally my pet peeve like i cannot deal with a stingy man i don't care how much you make like if you're be like nickel and diming me as your woman we are not meant to be (laughs) i agree and also i feel like in regards to some comments that I feel like I've seen online with people who are like, oh, you're only dating someone for money or things of that nature. That's just, you know, we've all we've discussed that we're both looking to be either homemakers, have children, have some sort of future that requires financial stability. So that is a qualification for anyone who's going to date us. It's not just the money part. I'm sure you would also have a standard of dating someone who is not only making a lot of money, but also has like emotional understanding if you're going to be raising children. It's just another qualification. Right. And that's what I was trying to like get at 
honestly, I thought that was a given, but apparently people didn't think that. Like when I say I liked a man who makes six figures, who has enough to provide for his family. If I were to marry him, we were to have kids. I wouldn't have to work. I can be a stay at home mom, stay at home wife. Cause that's like what I desire. Um, it already, I already vetted him for the other stuff. Like I vetted if he was kind, if he was honest, if he was uh, a good person, if he had similar values to me, um, cause those things make a relationship too. That's important as well. Um, hello that's like part of it i guess people just thought oh money hungry fat women like who would like not at all like literally you have to have uh similar values you have to have something in common because looks fade things fade but you want to make sure that like you're with someone who is a good partner to you who can be good to you and like that there's more to it than that so i thousand percent agree (laughs) and also When I was in high school, I had a friend whose grandmother told me it is just as easy to love a rich man as it is a poor man. (laughs) I love grandmas. Right? And it's like she comes from a different time and, you know, there's, there's some things to unpack with that. But I think the statement is true that I'm someone who it's like I fall for people pretty quickly. I'm pretty fast moving in relationships which like that that is something that can be looked at and fixed in time but the thing is like I'm speaking from experience here where um I have these like higher standards for men because I've dated ones that I had lower standards with Mm. and I've also dated women as well so we can get into that but um (laughs) Yeah, I'm just talking from experience. I dated a guy who first date brought me McDonald's french fries. But I've also dated a guy. I know. Wow. (laughs) But I've also... I did in high school, but like... (laughs) (laughs) I also dated a guy who took me to a really nice steakhouse first date. Spent maybe like, I don't know, $400. Yeah, totally. There's a range. (laughs) There's a range. But it's more about like who they are. But at the end of the day, like, you don't want to be under the the bridge and the, under the road you know what I'm saying totally you need a place to live totally <laughs> and I don't think that's asking for a lot I think that a lot of people uh were so outraged on the internet because they felt like what I was asking for was a lot and I remember actually I first went viral like my very first viral video was me talking about going on a date with this lawyer I was dating this lawyer mm-hmm. Um, and he <laughs> he wanted like he was like picking me up for the, f- the first day he picked me up. Um, we had a great date, paid for everything, dropped me back home. It was great. The second date he calls me and he's like, hey, um, you know, do you want to like meet me? We we're supposed to go to like golfing or something like do you want to meet me at the golf course? The golf course, mind you, is like an hour and a half away from my house and I don't have a car. So I was like, well, I, you know, I would rather, I would prefer you to pick me up or you can just call me an Uber. And then he's like, I recommend that you call your, like call your own Uber pretty much. And I'm just like, and so I was already like, okay, this is only a second date and you're already wanting me to travel, which I hate doing on dates. Like, I don't want to travel for you. Like pick me up like a gentleman. Right. And so I was like, okay, well, um, I would prefer if you just, you know, pick me up. And I basically just said that I was like, I expect a man to pay for my Uber. So that was the TikTok. And then, um, I talked about my sister's relationship and how, when, you know, the guy that she's with, he paid for all the dates. He would pick her up like a gentleman three years in, they live together. They're happy getting married, like, you know, this whole thing. And then, People were like saying things like, well, you know, if you don't have a car, like, why do you think that you deserve someone with a car who will pick you up? And it's like, I didn't realize that that was uh, it was tit for tat in dating, like, because I don't look for that. I believe that like men that I date, they look for different things than I as a woman would look for. So I'm just like just because my standards is this and I prefer a gentleman who picks me up and calls me an Uber doesn't mean that that's what necessarily he's looking for too. And the kicker is like, there were so many people saying, Oh, you'll, you know, he, he, he's right to dump you. Like, I'm so glad he dumped you and like, you're never going to get him. Blah blah. blah. It's so funny because 
We went on five other dates since then. <laughs> he did call my Uber every single time. Like you set the tone in your relationships. I fully believe that you set the tone in your relationships. I expected an Uber. He gave me an Uber. It's really not that big of a deal. <laughs> also, like if he wanted to, he would. If he has the means to yeah, of also, course. he would. Of course. I agree. I like when someone picks me up for a date. I don't think I've ever been Ubered for a date. Okay. Um, But I, I do appreciate being picked up and hot tip for ladies who or anyone who's watching and is going to go on a date with someone and they live either like in not a a safe like apartment complex like if you live in a house or you know you're living somewhere where there's not a bunch of safety and you still want someone to pick you up this is my hot tip i just put somewhere down the street oh totally and have them pick me up from Definitely. there so they don't have my address because if you're going on a, a couple oh. first dates yeah you don't want someone knowing your address <laughs> but so that's a hot tip like you still want them to pick you up you don't want to be spending your gas money yeah. because here's the thing there's a lot of like feminine presenting tax right like men can wear pretty much i mean not whatever yeah but they have a a limited amount of options that they kind of go with for the most part whereas women like we have a lot of clothing that we need to have for all these dates we have to buy makeup we have either perfume or or some sort of like you know, there's a lot of extra things like a face of makeup, you know, at Sephora can total up to like $200 easy. I know. And we're putting that on to go on this date with you. For you. And then Who on top of it, a- you want me to spend gas <laughs> or pay for half the date. I've had that too. I'm just like, how dare you? <laughs> like- Thankfully, I've never had where someone asked me, but I've asked them. I've been like, hey, do you need help with that? Especially if I don't really want to see them again. Oh, oh my gosh can we talk about that i (laughs) think that's fair i think that's fair if you realize in the middle of the date you don't want anything to do with this person i mean maybe not that extreme but if you don't want to see them again then you can just pay for your half and that kind of gives a little bit of a hint and it's also just like (laughs) i think you know they did ask you out so maybe they could pay but i think there is a respect there's respect involved yeah for sure and you know what's so like uh, it made me think of this one time i dated this guy in new york city he was a fi die guy financial district like he worked in wall street very nice guy i just wasn't feeling him so like when we when he took me out and it was like like this i would say like the by the second date um i was not feeling this man so i offered to pay which I never do. Cause usually like I am feeling you if I go out with you, like I've talked to you and FaceTimed you, whatever. But like by the second day, I really wasn't feeling him and I offered uh, to pay for the date. He was so insulted. Really? <laughs> yeah. He was just like, what? Cause he felt rejected. I think that's what it is. Like, I think he realized that I'm not the type of woman who would offer to pay for a date. So if I am offering to pay for a date, I, it's because I'm not feeling you. And like, because I wasn't feeling him, he felt a sense of rejection. I think and this is like, my, my opinion. Um, after that he's like no i'm gonna pay for this date and i'm asking you out another another date like he was determined and he like chased me down like called me every day texted me every day until i agreed to go out with him again i did and he totally messed up that date and i'm just like i'm done fumbled the bag (laughs) yeah and i'm just like so yeah i will i will definitely offer i think it's fair to offer to pay for the date if you know you're not feeling the guy because the thing is like the misconception is whatever for me personally i'm looking for my life partner i'm looking for a husband i'm looking for uh marriage going towards that that goal so i personally will not waste time on a guy that I am not um seeing long term because I can pay for my food like I yeah can, I can take myself out to eat like I don't need a man to do that for me but like I want I want him to do that for me if I'm interested in him so that I can he can show that he's able to provide for me and wants to and wants to like you know take care of me because that's what I'm looking for so it's just really just what I'm what I'm wanting to to see from a man that I can see myself together with see, I think your standards aren't too high I think that people assume because of either the way that we look that we shouldn't expect these things and that's kind of how I was living until I was maybe like 24 I'm 26 now um and I agreed with 
the societal idea that plus size women should be settling and we should just kind of take whoever wants us until I started gaining an internet following and until I started talking to other women and other people who also had these high standards like yourself. And I realized why wouldn't I want to be with a provider? Why wouldn't I want to be with someone who wants to help take care of me? I have been in a situation in the past where I was being like pretty much fully taken care of. I still had my brand deals, but I wasn't working <clears throat> anything outside of like social media influencer stuff. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that people should be relying on other people fully Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for their income. Oh, yeah. But I think if someone wants to provide, like, let's say 80% and you put in 20, Mm -hmm. okay. But I wouldn't wouldn't recommend letting someone completely finance your life. Right. And you know what's so funny? My dad, as old school as he is, like, I have a lot of my standards and my my thoughts on dating because of my dad. And he would always tell me, he's like, yes, definitely get a provider type, get a guy who's going to take care of you, take care of his family. You know, that because like my dad was definitely much so a provider type. But he also said, always have your own money always have something going for you always Mm -hmm. have something you can fall back on because that's like a lot of times like my dad grew up in Brooklyn in the 70s and 80s and he's seen so many women who were so dependent on a man they were stuck in really bad situations like domestic violence things like that because they and they had no choices like there wasn't a lot of choices back then thank god there's more resources now for women like that but like there wasn't a lot of choices back then and they just had to take whatever abuse that this man gave them because that was the way that they were able to live and survive because they had nothing for themselves so i'm definitely about having something f- that to call your own something for yourself even if a man is providing for you and taking care of you you have something going on for yourself you want that because like you you know before you met him what were you doing you know <laughs> like, right you want to have something going on so i definitely agree with that yeah definitely my family also was very much you know you want to have your own source of income because my grandmother, she had my mom and aunt with her then husband who, um, when my mom was two years old, he very, um, out of nowhere, he just passed away. And so if she didn't have her own job, which she had a really good job at the time, especially for women, she was a speech pathologist. Wow. Yeah. So she's very smart, very educated. And then she had two children and was a single parent. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and another thing too, like <clears throat> my, like my dad would also say like, you know, when he was like dating and like looking for like a wife or mother with children, he's like, I was always looking for a woman who I knew that God forbid anything happens to me, my children would be safe with her. Like she would be able to like handle <laughs> yeah. the kids, you know what I mean? Like just having, like having someone who's, also able to be like self-sufficient and like i think that's like the misconception i feel like a lot of people um were saying in the comments like oh well you know you just want to someone to take care of you You just want to like put all of your burden on a man you just want to be a child to that man but like if you really look like looking at my situation i have my own career i've been a full-time model for seven years i've been able to pay for my own place, pay my bills, go on vacations, live a full life as a model uh, without a man. So I'm just saying, though, if I'm going to add a man to my life, (laughs) he's going to have to take care of me and provide for me because I want to get married. I don't have children, all of these things. And like, that's just the steps that I'm taking in order to fulfill that uh, dream of mine, because I'm I'm not interested in being uh, a single mom or like a working mom for all this. Like, Like, I would say, I would always tell people like, I want to breastfeed my kids. Like I want to have 10 kids in a kiddie pool, like water birth style with like two black doulas in my house. <laughs> like, well, the thing <laughs> is like you wouldn't be a straight up just stay at home wife or stay at home mom mm-hmm. because you would also have your like entertainment career, oh, like yeah, your sure. modeling and for social sure. media and singing and all the other things that you do. For sure, yeah. But with that, you're your own boss. Yeah. So you just don't, it's like you don't want to have a job where you have to go sit in the cubicle nine to five right. while also having someone else raise your children. Right. Exactly. That's the point I was making. Like, yeah. you know, I want, I want a certain lifestyle and a certain uh, level 
level of uh, freedom to be able to be there for my kids. Right. And to like do my thing. As I've I been go. a nanny. <gasps> How is that? Honestly, it's it's fun, but it's not something that I could see myself doing as like long term or oh, career yeah. for someone else. Like, right. if I were, see, here's my thing: you seem very set on you know wanting the husband, wanting the children. Yeah, I w- would like to get married. I'm still kind of on the fence about the children part, but that's where having a man who does have a large income to support you and a family comes into place. Because I am open to dating someone who doesn't want children. But if the person I'm dating wants children, it's required that they're making enough to where we don't have to struggle (laughs) with those kids. Because I grew up with struggling parents and it's not fun. (laughs) It's not. It's not fun. It's not at all. (laughs) I was thinking that too because like I, you know, I grew up, I would say like lower middle class, maybe middle class and like, um, and I don't know, my, my parents are immigrants. I'm a first generation American kid. So even though we were okay, like we lived in a house growing up, we were good. They still have the mentality of like immigrants where if it's, if you don't need it, you don't need, like, you, you know, you can't just have things you want. Like if you don't need it, you don't need to buy it. Like, you know, so like when I would go and I grew up in a very privileged area. So like when I would go on like school field trips and like everybody had at least their parents gave them like 20 bucks for the gift shop. I never had $1 for a gift shop. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I was, wasn't able to do like things that were, were considered normal to the kids in my class because I, w- I had like a different upbringing. Like I had yeah. different parents. Like they, you know, they're from third world countries. Like they like worked really hard to get to this country to make something of, of themselves. Like that's why I had such uh, like, you know, higher expectations for the kids. I feel like if you're a first generation American kid, like you, you have more on your plate to prove because your parents like did the work of like coming here. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and all of that, you know. My parents are such, I mean, they're not slackers. They do hustle where they can, but they are both like, I don't know. On my mom's side, I'm eighth generation American and we're lazy. <laughs> we're, and I hate it because I wanted her, you know, growing up, I wanted to be able to have the extra like 20 bucks to go to the mall with my friends. I didn't want to be stealing from Claire's. It's just where I was. <laughs> it's just where I was. Not, not anymore. Claire's. Thankfully, I'm not stealing from Claire's oh, anymore. Gosh. But that was the vibe back then. Did you then. ever get caught? Yes, I did. Oh, I got gosh. caught stealing from the Urban Outfitters at the Simi Valley Mall. People from high school, if you're watching this, <laughs> that happened when I was 13. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to go to the mall for an entire (laughs) year and my parents had to pay a fine really yeah oh my gosh literally I would not dare try to steal from anywhere because don't do it white privilege right here don't do it I'm glad you said it because as dark skin as I am when I go to any store automatically the don't old white lady is like following me around like I've never stolen anything because I'm so scared of that situation because I've been trained since I was like eight years old I would go into a mall and people would follow me around just thinking that I'm stealing I'm like I literally am too dark skinned to steal it's like I would never up. try that it was me and Claire's <laughs> oh my gosh and like okay so like when, like I don't know middle school I think I was like 13 the punk like punk rock was in like avril lavigne and all of them and like so the girls like the cool girls were the ones with like the chopped colored hair and i like i was like oh my gosh they're so cool like i wish i can afford all those jewelries and those bangles whatever didn't know they were stealing them so like we (gasps) yeah we went to the mall (laughs) and then like she like i found like the girls found me they're like oh hey gabby like you want to hang out with us i'm like yeah so i literally hung out with them for like two minutes and then i saw them stealing oh no like the jewelry i'm like girl you want me to go to jail or get shot (laughs) i'm not trying to be with you so like i literally like me and myself were like okay oh, we gotta no. go oh no yeah because I, I, I know i wouldn't get away with that like i wouldn't try because i know i wouldn't get away with it because people follow me around that's why I, okay besides being a black first person being a fat person is very triggering and traumatizing just going into a mall because nothing fits yeah. people are looking at you like what do you think you're gonna fit in here <laughs> you know what i mean like all these things i'm just like online shopping's where it's at that's why I like an online shopping yeah honestly i've heard the stories of people talking to customer service people inside the store and them kind of giving them the look of like oh what are you gonna buy here i get the opposite all the time where they're like oh my god you can totally like make it find something in here i'm like you guys think that i'm smaller than i am (laughs) 
I love that they're being so good to you, though. Like, I went the one time I can remember getting good customer service was last month. I walked into Urban, oh, sorry, American Eagle because they have really good American Eagle, like plus size jeans. Like, I think they're called the Dream Jean. It's like really stretchy, but it looks like regular jeans. Mm. This like 16 year old Hispanic girl from the moment I walked in, she was like, I will take care of you. She like got all the size 18 Aww. jeans in the store and like would switch them out as I'm in the dressing room. And I found the perfect fit. And then she, the one of the ones that they didn't have my size in the store, she ordered online and she was just like so helpful. And like, it was like the most relaxing, non-anxiety ridden I've ever had going into a mall. And I was like, God bless you. Like you made my day. You're make, you're the change I want to see in this world. Cause when I was 13, there was nobody trying to help me in the mall. <laughs> You know, so I was like really happy about that. That was a very good experience. And I, and I, I every time I go back to that mall, I look for her and I, I, re, I gave her like a five star review on Google. Like, <laughs> I was oh, like, yeah, about I've been this. yelping lately. Really? Speaking of reviewing, yes. <laughs> I'm trying to become Yelp elite. I do a lot of, uh, you know, going on dates to different nice restaurants Ooh. and I have to take advantage of it and get that Yelp elite. Yes. Yeah. What happens when you get Yelp elite? You get invited to like certain events around Ooh. LA. I think free food. Yeah. The places free will food. like ask you to come in and give you like free food to take pictures and videos for I them. Love that. That's what I've been told. Okay. It hasn't happened yet because I'm not Yelp Elite. You'll yet. have to give me the update. <laughs> so speaking of, I want to get into this topic. Yes. Um, what has dating like life been for you recently can you tell me a story of like maybe a guy that you dated recently you know what what was his lifestyle his income how did he treat you what kind of dates did you guys go on what is it like being a fat woman dating in LA like what's that like for you what is it has it been like for you so I've kind of moved back to LA then I did some traveling and then I did like a moving back the second time so when I was traveling I kind of dated all around and then once I plopped into LA for the second time and really stayed here mm -hmm. I went on two dates until I ended up dating my ex for about a year okay. and he was a senior software engineer so he made like pretty good income <laughs> and I was in a you know, we were both in like very interesting life positions where I'd moved to was just not it like nothing against the people who I was living with it just the area and it was like right off the freeway it was very loud right it was just a lot and he had a downstairs neighbor who was harassing him so annoying we very quickly bonded over just being in weird life situations we got covid together oh my gosh covid buddies for life that really speeds up the <laughs> dating process i don't know if you've ever dated someone and then you both catch covid together but oh, it's it. like all of a sudden you're like 90 years old holding on to them and yeah. it's like COVID's going in the history books and we oh, survived yeah. it <laughs> we, we did. I've gotten it twice too it's crazy yeah I think I've gotten it um twice as well wow so like he's a senior software engineer and the soft software engineers I know make like 100 to 200,000 so he's making money he's living in LA what how did he like treat you did you guys go on any fancy dates or any trips like what was it like being with him so when we first met, he basically wanted me to move in right away. And I said no, because I had just found my own place and moving in with someone, you know, after not knowing them for that long is very scary. But he offered to pay my rent so that I could like spend oh, pause, time with him. Pause. He offered to do what? He offered to, well, he not only offered, he did. He did pay my rent. Okay. So this is like one of the main points to my viral videos that people were I know. <laughs> like outraged about. Like you, you how, shouldn't be how outraged could a man if a man pay a fat woman's rent. If a well, also he was fat too. And that's <laughs> <laughs> that's something that I think oh, you know, a lot of podcasts we've we've seen recently. Yeah want to say that plus size women don't deserve a man who makes six figures which i've dated men who make six figures and yeah. i know you have as well for sure and the thing is that there is no sort of like requirement for a man to make six figures and then have certain like 
looks or traits like any really any Literally. man if he can figure it out he can make six figures <laughs> so i think a lot of people are imagining leonardo dicaprio <laughs> in the great gatsby or something not the great gatsby <laughs> but i'm just saying like when they hear six figures they think it's some like really like buff hot man in, but like there's fat guys who also make six figures and i think they're forgotten about too yeah and I, also they can like plus size women right Right. You know, it's so funny, though. Like, I would like to date a six figure man who's plus size. I haven't yet because I haven't really had the opportunity. I don't know. Plus size men don't really gravitate more. Don't they don't like me like that. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like the ones that I've met, they're like going for the opposite. Like they're opposites attract. Like they go for like the petite littles. And I'm just like, huh? Like, but then like the gym bros with like the big muscles, they're all over me. I'm just like, uh, chill out, buddy. Like, <laughs> you know, but I like all types. Like I have like, I have no like real physical type. Cause I've dated literally like skinny, scrawny to big buff to, plump but i wouldn't consider plus size i would like to try that so hit my dms no 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 not really <laughs> <laughs> i've also dated a wide spectrum of people all different body types uh genders races it to me it's more about like how do we get along how do yeah. we vibe and then more recently in the last two years it's been okay can you provide um that emotional and financial support also it goes back to yeah, like we were saying before, having families that come from having parents that can't really provide, it's a little bit of a trauma response, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just like, I know what I want. I think that's what it is. I think we're women that, that know what we want and we, we've we experienced that already through dating. We've experienced dating men who are in the caliber of requirements that we have, the standards that we have, uh, it's working for us. Um, I feel like the, it's just so new cause it's not advertised. Honestly, like when I went viral, there were women who were plus size women who are married to very wealthy men. I'm talking above six figures, like very wealthy men, like doing really well. And they would like DM me and say, Hey, like, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Like I'm living proof. It is out there, but they're they living proof. <laughs> yes. Living proof. But like, they're just not advertising. And I feel like our society has, has always equated like, rich and wealthy with like skinny and white and like thin that checks out like i don't think i don't think they're wrong like i think normally if you have a lot of money you can pay for the better gym membership or the trainer or you can yeah. pay for eating certain foods like i think that in people's mind that does make sense however there's a there's a wide spectrum of people who have different priorities for different things. So it's like you could have all the money in the world, but if your main priority or you just like you can't get your mindset around losing weight, like right. back in the day, my mom would always tell me this. <laughs> back in the day, fat people were seen as being like really well off because you had the money to be eaten good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's way back in the day. Like the uh, like the um, Kings and Queens type yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> or even the Great Depression. Like that was right. The right. And, you know, so I totally I I totally get that so okay so you dated this guy didn't work out um any anybody else that you want to talk about <clears throat> um i'll go back to that for a sec when i've also said to a few friends because a lot of a lot of people were like my mindset before i was around 24 that they were just going to take like scraps and um basically not elevate their standards for what they want right and in regards to that, I've told a friend recently, like, you would rather be at the Ritz-Carlton crying into a pillow than at the Wendy's parking lot. <laughs> Not the Wendy's parking lot. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, <clears throat> dating. So, like, for example, with that guy, like, we got into a fight. I was very upset. And he did, like, rent me a hotel room for the night because I lived with him. He rented you a ho hotel room so that you would have space from him yeah. to, like, not be in the same. So he had the money and the will to, like, hey, He had a little a guest off. house, too, I could have been in. What? I know. Wow. He didn't want to see me. So he had the money to, like, basically not. <laughs> that's, like, that's like luxury breakup that's like luxury oh, relationship issues but we didn't write well did we break up that well i think that was like the, we broke up twice so okay. that was the first one and he gave me like breakup money essentially 
What's breakup money? I'm nervous he's gonna see this and I'm not seriously talking <laughs> about it, but I will I will not put that many details, okay. but I will say he gave me the money so that I could move out. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Because he had me move in with him very quickly, so there was already kind of talk. So about... instead of throwing you out in the streets in the cold, what a he heartless was like, person! Oh my god, <laughs> here's some severance money for this relationship that is now over. He's also paid That's severance so nice. to other exes too. Oh, oh, this man has money, honey. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's like a rich boy stuff. <laughs> rich man vibes. That's crazy. Wow. But then the emotional intelligence. Eh. Oh, and See, I think that's, that's where it's hard. It's very, very hard. So I, I, some of the, okay, what I've noticed with some of the like high value, high earning men that I've dated, um, they have money. So they like, they work hard. Some of them are doctors, lawyers, engineers. I pretty much stick, stick to those three. Um, and like other stuff too, but like, so when I would date like this doctor or whatever, he would have, you know, the money. He works really hard. He's accomplished. He had to go to school for like 10 years to be a doctor. So yeah. clearly he knows what he's doing. But the emotional intelligence kind of really lacked with him. And I think it might just be because, you know, he he may not have to have put that much effort into his emotional intelligence because he was hot and he had money. And like nobody really questioned his, his uh, ability to be emotionally there because there was just so he had so many options there were so many women after him they're like yeah like whatever we'll take your bad attitude and like you not understanding like my needs and whatever but like obviously i'm not like that i'm like a woman with an opinion and yeah. that's not always popular but like that's who i am hey it's gabby Faye. i also like, <laughs> have opinions it's yeah. hard out here with opinions right when you have an opinion and then they just want to like you know, dismiss, not everybody, but like some men would just like dismiss me um, for having an opinion. I have family members who are like not happy about, uh, you know, my TikToks and like the, the things that I'm saying because they don't appreciate a woman with an opinion. They feel like men can have the opinions, but a woman, eh, you know, they want to be dismissive. And I just feel like, you know, God gave us a brain. Women can talk. Women have opinions. Like we can do this too, you know? So I just think that's really interesting. But I feel like for me, I'm very about emotional intelligence because I, I double major in like I double majored in pre-law and um, psychology. Oh, wow. I know. I, so Good for I was, you. I know. I was supposed to go to law school the day of my graduation. I told my parents that I was going to like move to L.A. to be a starving artist. So I did that instead. And here I am. <laughs> so like it's working out, obviously. But like um, so like my psychology studies, um, I'm really passionate about uh, people and like about their emotions and their emotional development. So like when I think about the guys that I date, <laughs> I noticed that they sometimes very struggle with it. Like the, sometimes they just struggle with emotional intelligence uh, and I, I'm more patient, I guess, because I understand like what they're where they're coming from. So I think that's why uh, they really like enjoy our conversations sometimes and enjoy me as a person because I can relate to them. But, you know, sometimes I don't want to be your mother. Sometimes yeah. I don't want to do all of that extra stuff. Like depends on what they're putting into me as well. So I feel like I just don't want to get drained. So if I'm feeling drained, uh, then I probably wouldn't be OK with that, I guess. But yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel like in my last more serious relationship, I was kind of on the flip side of things where he was kind of more of like a dad or a father to me because he was older than me. He was 35. I was 25. So 10 year age difference. Wow. So he taught me a lot. Honestly, that relationship was pretty. It was like obviously like financially helpful because he was kind of like helping me out in a lot of ways yeah. but then also kind of gave me some motivation to want to be like businesswoman ceo so hey. i started my own business <gasps> after the breakup wow that's amazing and i just kind of stumbled into it but it's going really well it's been like two months what's your business my business i have a few different online businesses okay. but i mainly help with um influencers getting brand deals and negotiating the brand deals okay and i started off with just like one client and i now have like 25 that's in amazing. two months i know it's and very you see, busy <laughs> you see like the difference between like dating a man who can help you in that way and like boost you up so even if you guys aren't together anymore you're not at a loss like you 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 were able to um, you know, get to another level in your own life and your own career and like what you're pursuing. 
something yeah by I being mean, with someone who like could do that for you definitely like if you find a guy who you really get along with and he happens to have money he happens to have a career and his life together which is great then really take try to learn from them honestly yeah. and try to figure out how they got there you don't have to do everything step by step but ask questions learn like it's really a good opportunity for you he helped me buy a car he helped me buy a laptop wow yeah i mean that i would have loved a laptop back in like college where i'm like oh my gosh i really need to get these like videos and this content up but this actually brings me to my next point okay stop dating broke boys who have no ambition who are not working hard who are not going anywhere i mean and then my term broke boys i call them the broke boys club on my tiktok because i'm not just talking about money i'm talking about they're mentally broke they're emotionally broke <laughs> like they their whole mindset they're so stuck in their bitterness for women because of whatever yeah. woman hurt them in the past that it's keeping them mentally blocked from moving forward in in their own goals in their own life so when i say the broke boys club or broke boys i'm talking about not just money money too like but i'm talking about ambition having lack thereof um talking about just being so bitter and angry at women that you can't allow yourself to like fully love and embrace uh, a relationship with a woman that's like what i'm talking about when i say broke boys and another viral video that i did it was talking about broke boys and how like you should avoid them because they stress you out i wasn't uh, uh, contrary to popular belief i wasn't always dating uh high value high earning men i dated some very broke bums mm -hmm. <laughs> and like and i back then i used to think oh i have this like love feeling this fluffy feeling in my in my heart it must be love and i i must like you know this is real so i have to like sacrifice myself to make sure that he's okay and that he's doing well when and literally he was just like using me as a doormat you know and so like one of like so I, I would say stuff like um you know like if you these are the signs and like i was basically giving you examples of like what i've experienced so like sometimes i'll like go um date a guy who is a grown-up like me mm -hmm. and i will go into his room and he doesn't even have proper like living quarters like he has a mattress on the floor with like one stained pillow and he wants me to like come over and hang out i'm just like where am i gonna sit where am i gonna do there's not even a pillow for me i'm literally on the floor and i'm like breathing in all the dust in here it's, it feels like a not college the dust <laughs> not it the feels dust. like a college dorm in here i'm like dude we are not in college yeah. anymore get your life together you know what i mean like i'm not saying you have to have like all these things but like yeah to date me you have to show me that you're mature enough and that is like some college boy vibe and I'm not in college anymore. So I just don't like that. And then also my pet peeve is when we're going to a restaurant, the restaurant is like already nice. Like you already tell like he, he, this, he's, this is a comfortable range of spending for him. Like this is a nice restaurant, but they just happen to like have like a dollar and 50 upcharge, like a dollar upcharge for like extra cheese or whatever. And he's making such a big stink about the dollar extra like upcharge when the whole meal already is like expensive so you're worried about dollars so, like that kind of thing it's just like it really irks me and it just shows me like how broke you are and just, we're not cat compatible like we're not gonna like one time i went out with this guy we went out for dumplings which i've never <laughs> <laughs> i've never had before love dumplings the dumplings and like <laughs> this was like one of like my, my broker dates but like <laughs> On my broker days oh i'm sorry but like i'm sorry for watching this you know who you are so he took me out for dumplings it was like tuesday two dollar dumplings something like that in the lower east side manhattan so i didn't know it was two dollar dumplings i just thought that he was just taking me out on a nice date i was like okay two dollars i guess if you get a deal and it's good so he gets like four dumplings two of them came back like burnt on the side he spent the next 45 minutes arguing with the Chinese lady to get those two dumplings <laughs> returned and refunded <laughs> so that he could get new two more dumplings. And I'm just like, the whole date was spent with you arguing about $2 for $2 dumpling day. Like, you're a loser. It's too, that's too much. It's like, if you're going to spend your time arguing with the wait staff instead of talking to me on the date... <laughs> 
priorities literally and that's what i mean by like mentally broke like he he didn't realize that he was missing time with a queen trying to build a relationship with a queen because you're worried about two dollar dumpling day and the chinese lady not giving you the two dollars back for the two burnt dumplings i'm like bro like this is not the time do that with your homeboys not with a lady you asked out on a date like it it gives really bad vibes really bad energy i really don't like when and I'm sure most people don't like when they're on a date with someone and they're mean to the wait staff or they're rude oh. in general. Yeah, no, because that'll be you next. Mm-hmm. You're right. <laughs> Once they get sick of you and get rid of you, that'll be you next. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that is a thing, though, with guys who have money and, you, you know, when you're dating them, mm. that's something to look out for. Yeah. Are they mm-hmm. kind to people who can't benefit them? Right. Right. Oh my gosh. that My dad used to tell me that all the time. Like if, if that's when my, my like older people would say like, how does he treat his mother? Like, you know, what's his relationship? Like I literally dated a guy like a few, like last year who told me that he hated his mother and it wasn't like for any, like, like you know they just didn't get along they didn't have a good relationship but like just the fact that he was so adamant about hating his mother and he had so much hate for her i'm just like baby you need to heal before you go into any relationship with a woman because if you feel that strongly about your mother and she's known you your whole life like i don't know i'm I'm like scared of those situations like yeah. you know what i mean like you'd have to like she would have to like done something like killed somebody for like you know what i mean like i don't know i don't know where where that would be an okay thing but like you could just tell that he hadn't gotten over it so i'm like i don't know if this is the right time to be in a relationship because you're scaring me (laughs) yeah i mean i've dated people who are like attached at the hip to their mother and then i've also dated people who are very avoidant of their mother so there's a wide spectrum there i i would hope to find someone who's got some sort of secure attachment with their mother as well that would be helpful. <laughs> yeah. So I, I agree. The the mother, the mama's boy, they like, and it, I'm such a mother type of woman. Like, I, I don't know. I can't help it. Like since I was younger, like my friend group, I'm like the mom of the group. And like, I'm always making sure everybody's like well fed and like safely driven to point A to point B. Like, and so I, I'm, I'm kind of like that with my partners sometimes but to an extent and I remember this one um like teacher counselor told me like you know Gabby if you're a woman who gives like mom motherly vibes then you need to get a guy who gives like daddy vibes like fatherly vibes you know because like that then you can have that give and take and you won't be just like drained every time so I definitely look for that as well so we are coming to a close i think this is a really good talk i'm like so excited about uh this podcast and if you haven't already please um subscribe follow us uh shannon do you want to say your at and sure <laughs> so you can follow me on instagram and tiktok at hello fashion foodie and i think youtube as well yummy i love that (laughs) and you guys know you follow me on tiktok it's gabby Faye or instagram i am gabby Faye. my stuff will be linked but um i thank you so much for coming and last thoughts before we go is there anything that you wanted to say that we forgot about uh thank you so much for having me and Keep your standards up, ladies. Yes! I, and and anyone yes! who's dating in general, <laughs> uh, keep your standards high for yourself and the people you're dating. And it's okay to be single and it's okay to prioritize yourself in relationships as well. Yeah, for sure. I I I want to talk I wanted to talk about that because I wanted to let you all know like the women who I've inspired with my content, the women who feel uh, that they you know, need to raise their standards or even like reevaluate uh, what they're accepting from these men and from dates. You are worthy. You're worthy of high standards. You know, don't be feeling guilty because you're wanting a little more. It's okay because you see two women who are getting more because we're we're saying that that's what we want like we're we're saying what we want okay know? i do have one more thing just real quick okay so the people who comment and want us to lower our standards um i want you to ask yourself why is it so that we'll date people like you yup that's a good point why are you why are you trying to bring us down yeah exactly like why are you trying to humble us i've been humble for 24 years exactly. this is my last my last two years i wasn't humble anymore and it's gotten me a car a laptop a new phone a house <laughs> ah, 
So keep your standards high. <laughs> exactly. Don't listen to people who want to make you feel lower. Exactly. You get what you accept. I've I've always known that. Like it doesn't matter what you look like or what you think society tells you that you deserve because of how you look or whatever your status is. You get what you accept. So do, stop accepting all of those things and start accepting good things and positive things and and what you're looking for because you decide what you do with your life and and who you get into relationship with that's your decision so thank you so much for coming and listening to the gabby faye podcast and i will see you next time Bye. bye